Sullivan. I'm a former IRS agent and teaching instructor with the Internal Revenue Service. I, um, this is the home of the five minute or less video. I worked at IRS for a decade. I'm in private practice and tax defense for four decades. Uh, many of you have seen me on all my national broadcast and have come to, to join me on my YouTube channel. I appreciate this. Uh, you can go to 777irs.com. You can see all my clips, but more importantly, you can see the team of former IRS agents that we have built, specially handpicked to go ahead and represent you in, in any manner. Um, today, what I wa uh, want to talk to you about is about the offer and compromise and how to win the offer and compromise. Um, as a former IRS agent, I used to accept offers and deny offers. I know offers and compromise inside and out. Uh, Peter Salinger of my office just picked the guy up. Excellent. He's worked over 2,500 offers and compromise for the government. Well, that's a low number. He's probably well over 3,000. Uh, he was a former uh, office. He used to run the office and supervise the offer and compromise group. He was a field branch chief, worked in appeals. So between the two of us, we know exactly what we're doing. So I'm passing this information out. When you listen to me today, you're either looking for somebody to hire or you're doing this yourself. So either or, I want you to know what some of the secrets are with the offer and compromise and what I really need to teach you here. There's only two things that I'm going to go over with you that are the most important thing about the offer and compromise. So as a former IRS agent, I have a checklist of all the things that I need to go over. Maybe there's 10 or 15 things on that list. But the two most important aspects of the offer and compromise and how to win them are knowing how IRS is going to view your assets and how IRS is going to look at your necessary living expenses. What? Your necessary living expenses. So let's look at the asset first because that's easier to deal with. IRS is going to look at the assets on your 433 AOIC and they're going to assign a value to them. Now they may be right or wrong and you have a right to negotiate and challenge those numbers, especially real estate. IRS uses Realer.com and Zillow to come up with their numbers. But what happens if your home is not worth that much? Well, there's techniques that you can use to win that by getting other comps. Uh, statements from general contractors that your home isn't worth that much because it has tracks. There's a whole bunch of things you can do in cars and everything. So when IRS gives you that number, may not be right and you can go ahead and say mm, you know irs we really really don't agree with that if your first person that you're looking at looking at the offer you don't agree you can always appeal that here's what stumps everyone up and it's called the the necessary living expenses when you fill that form out and i prefer you to if you're listening to this video is to pull up an irs form 433a it's not the 433 OIC, it's the 433A. So if you can pull that up, I want you to go to page four if you can. Uh, once again, go to page four, stop my video, pull up the IRS form 433A only and go to page four. So now that you're back and if you've done that, what you're going to find out is when you put that your actual monthly expenses there, IRS probably isn't going to ex accept those monthly expenses. IRS has what's called a, a national standard expense that was put together by the Department of Labor in every county in the United States. Yes, if you want to find what IRS is going to allow you on the form to come up with expenses, go to IRS national standards for food and clothing. You'll populate and you'll see what they're going to allow for food and clothing. Then you're going to put IRS national standards for housing and utilities. That's going to take you to a state page. You're going to populate your county and you're going to populate how many people live in your house. That's what IRS is going to allow you for housing and utilities, not your number. IRS then is going to look at your your, your vehicle operation uh, or your, how much your vehicle costs, what you're driving, the actual car expense. You've got to Google that. IRS national standards for 
owning a car and operating a car, they're two different. So IRS is going to bump your numbers out and put those in. If you are not familiar with the uh, the uh, national standard expense, do not do your offer and compromise by yourself. You will probably find that IRS is going to bump what you've put down. They could bump it up one or two thousand dollars, and it will throw your offer way off. IRS will accept the rest of the expenses you have. If you've got insurance, dental, court ordered, child care, and your taxes, you better be making a current tax uh, estimate payment or they're gonna boot it. But that's how IRS is gonna view your offer. So if you're having, if you're gonna do this yourself and you don't owe a lot, do it yourself. If you owe a large dollar, you're crazy doing your offer and compromise good chances you're never going to accept it. Uh, if you're going to hire a company, if you're not going to hire us, you have to make sure you hire an attorney, an enrolled agent, or a CPA. We have all those, obviously, because they're the only person that can work your case with IRS. Don't believe all these ads you see. You can get your money down for this and this. Only three designations of people can help you, an enrolled agent, a tax attorney, and a CPA. If not, you're speaking to a salesman and you're ready to get ripped off. You found out everything you need from me today. Give me a subscription. I love subscriptions because YouTube loves subscriptions. So if you'd give me one, I would appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Thank you and nice speaking with you.